Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Buddha is the light in your home. We'll talk about Buddha. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Buddha is the light in your home. It's 8.30 in Nigeria, it's 9.30 in lovely Cairo, and I believe it's 11.30 in the Gulf, but you know what time it is. It's time for Viewer's Pulse, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back, as always, to Huda TV, and welcome to Viewer's Pulse. Uh, this evening we're joined by a very special guest. We're very pleased and honored to have him here with us. He is the president and the founder of the Muslim Research Development Foundation, and you can also go online at uh, www islam21c.com of course i'm talking about dr haytham al haddad assalamu alaikum dr haytham alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dr haytham thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be here with us exactly. on this live program uh, dr haytham uh, this program we preview the shows that are being recorded now for the viewers to give them some insight into what they can expect to see on huda tv mm. and we do know you just recently uh, yesterday completed uh, a 26 episode series titled pros of wisdom uh, 30 minutes each inshallah ta'ala so can you tell us a little bit about this program pros of wisdom why did you think of this title this topic what topics are addressed this sort of thing go ahead doctor yeah bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah um, titles of wisdom is um, mainly um, a program that quotes uh, some of the statements of the early generation okay. of the second and the third generation uh, statements that cover all aspects of life and um, uh, we take in every episode one statement and we comment on that statement and we link it, of course, to Quran and Sunnah and we link it to other statements from uh, scholars okay. from the early generation. Um, the purpose or the idea behind this program is that um, we always say that we need to refer to Quran and Sunnah, but we rarely uh, put any attention to the early generation who were the most qualified people to understand Quran and Sunnah and how they understood Quran and Sunnah. Okay, well, this is uh, one thing. The other thing is we have great legacy. They left a great legacy for us and uh, we need to take those pearls of wisdom. We need to uh, uncover or discover the treasures that they have, uh, the treasure that le they have uh, left for us. Um, also, we need to see how they practiced Islam, how they lived Islam. Islam is a theoretical uh, principle, someone might say. Uh, has there any people or have there any people who practiced Islam, who lived Islam? Right, okay. How did they live it? Uh, the last point is, um, you know, Brother Malik, many people who follow uh, as Salaf al Salih, yeah? Uh, irrespective of the name, I'm not really very interested about names and the classifications, right. sure. etc. But many people who follow as Salaf al Salih, uh, I think some of them, they are not following the whole methodology. They are focusing on certain elements from the, our forefathers or from the early uh, scholars or from the early generation. Some of them, they are focusing on the spiritual side of the life of the early generation um, or early generations. Some of them are focusing on the militant side. Some yes. of them are focusing on other aspects. We need to have an overall idea about sure. it. Um, I think I have given a good idea about how they used to live in um, Islam, but mainly we were selecting uh, some uh, really <laughs> pearls of wisdom. Okay. Some statements that have a lot uh, that uh, are really informative and heavy statements that uh, Salaf al-Salih or the early generation uh, have said. Can you share one of those with us and for the viewers in order for them to get an idea about the feel, the feel of the show? Yeah, a number of things. For example, um, one very profound statement of Suleyman ibn Jafar. He said, Care or concern for the akhirah is a light in your heart. Concern for the dunya is a darkness in your heart. Wonderful. A very wonderful statement. Very wonderful statement. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak said, The good character is to have a cheerful, smiley face and to give anything which is good and to abstain or refrain from anything 
that is harmful. Again, a very wonderful, uh, wonderful statement. Um, Uthman ibn Affan, I picked his statement because of the status of Uthman ibn Affan. Maybe that was the only uh, no, companion that I have okay. mentioned. Um, he said, if you have a pure hearts, you will not have your fill from the book of Allah. Subhanallah. Another statement by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Okay. Uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said uh, when he followed the janazah, uh, of Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik and he became now the Khalifa of the Muslimin. He was so sad and he had so uh, sorrow and grief and one of his uh, uh, servants told him why are you sad? He said do you think that I will be happy while I will feel that every single Muslim in this globe in my Umbra. kingdom in my ummah will like me to fulfill his needs without even asking me about his needs. A very wonderful statement. Um, we have another statement about uh, consultation. That the one who consult, uh, Sufyan al-Thawri said, consultation is a part of or half of wisdom. Okay, consulting others. And uh, for example, these two statements are talking about the uh, the, the, the Islamic political system that there is shura, there is consultation, it is not a dictatorship system, as well as uh, the responsibility, the sense of responsibility the leader should feel. Okay, Dr. Hayden, thank you for that uh, some that summary of your program, Pros of Wisdom. Why don't we take a brief look? Uh, we have prepared a clip from that uh, one of those episodes. Oh, we really? Take a, yeah, we can take a look at it and then you can explain it inshallah. You, oh, inshallah. inshallah. While you guys stay tuned, check out this clip of Pros of Wisdom, which has just finished been recording yesterday. We, Dr. Hatem just finished it last night, rather. It hasn't even aired yet on Huda TV, so it's a sneak peek, kind of behind the scenes uh, treat for you guys. So check it out and stay tuned. <laughs> So Uthman ibn Affan used to have a strong connection with the book of Allah Jalla wa'ala. In fact, in one of his greatest statements, he said, in the dunya I like three things. Provide food for uh, hungry people. Provide clothes for, uh, for clothless people. And the recitation of the book of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Uthman ibn Affan is the one who reported the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa'allama the best among you is the one who learns the Qur'an and the one who teaches the Qur'an radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Welcome back to the Pulse. Dr. Haitham, you were just talking about that clip, uh, that quotation yeah. uh, of Uthman ibn Affan. May Allah be pleased with him. Wh why did uh, you choose that uh, particular quotation? Because you did say this program was about the Tabi'in, didn't you? Yeah. Um, in fact, I was looking uh, for a quotation about the importance of Quran. I found so many of them. You know, the Quran is the heart of the Muslim Ummah, is the heart of every single Muslim. Um, I found so many. Then I found that Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a person whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam likes the most and he was known as the Nurain, the one with two lights and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him his both wives. There was one report after, uh, there was one report that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Uthman after his second wife who was the second daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, he said to him Uthman if we have another daughter we would have wed it to you, with her to you, yes, subhanallah. subhanallah. So, out of respect for the status of Uthman, sure. radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and his unique attachment to the Qur'an, I said maybe it is better to Including quote Allah. him. Yeah. Okay, but why the, uh, you chose the Tabayeen in this, uh, in this uh, series, Pros of Wisdom, uh, why not the first generation? Why did you choose the second and the third? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Um, see, uh, I, I believe that uh, previously, I think uh, last Ramadan or Ramadan before, uh, the Ramadan before, we recorded the life of the second generation right. as well. When I recorded that program, I found that they have so many beautiful statements that we need to share with others. 
and people are unaware people uh, unaware of those statements people think that oh we have the great companions they don't think that the second generation was a great generation they don't think that the third generation was a great generation right. as well okay so that's why we said okay let us show our viewers that we have a legacy yes. either from the second generation or the first generation the sahaba or the second or the even the third so, so in order, you want to create awareness also we could say about the, yes. the, the glory of this generation we only have a minute before the break perhaps we can talk about before we move to another topic after the break uh, were you satisfied with the results did you cover enough uh, the material as you wanted uh, did you want to do more episodes will you do like a season two follow-up for this or oh, wallahi to be honest with you uh, i think i need to do more right maybe right. maybe i will record another program because okay. really see i i like uh, that I like to live with the program that I'm recording. Right. Yeah. yeah so I lived with the second generation. Yes. Yeah, I lived with their statements. So I found, I found myself more attached to their statements. Yeah, so, so that's why I would like really to to follow maybe, up. Inshallah. Yes. Inshallah. Doctor Hartam, Haddad, stay with me. Inshallah. We have more to talk about after the break. You guys don't go anywhere. We have a a sneak peek into. Uh, uh, you just saw a sneak peek into Pearls of Wisdom, and we're going to be talking about another program being recorded right now, just uh, right here in the same studio uh, with Dr. Haitham al Haddad. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. <laughs> In a game of golf, both the caddy and the golfer have the same goal, to get the ball into the hole. Interest-free banking is similar. With a clear view of the fairway, a predefined agreement without shift in targets, things should end up where you want them. Your deposits are safe and your funds are ethically managed with a transparent and equitable approach to sharing risk and reward. No interest burden means more time to relax without the worry of nasty surprises. Rest assured, our interest is mutual. Jazz Bank, Nigeria's first full-fledged non-interest bank. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Talk. I'm your host, Omar Sheer. This season of Tech Talk, we will focus specifically on the internet. A student would um, type their paper, and instead of handing me a hard copy of their paper, they would upload it to this learning system, okay. this, this e-learning system. I have some great experience when it comes to uh, technology, and in particular, internet technology. Call to action is something that we do in our day-to-day -day lives, and maybe we don't realize it. Now, we want to discuss after you have a product and you have a website and you have a way to communicate with your customers which would be your email marketing system now it's time to take the money from the customer Welcome back to Viewers Pause. Give us a call live. You guys know the numbers. Inshallah Ta'ala will be on your screen as well. 002-0238-555-248 or 9. I'm joined by Dr. Haitham Al-Hadad. I'm very pleased to have him on the program. Dr. Haitham, thank you for staying with me. I certainly appreciate your time. Exactly. Dr. Uh, we talk about pearls of wisdom. Let's go Inshallah Ta'ala to, uh, to the next program, which we began recording this morning or this afternoon, titled Deceptions. Yes. I'm very honored and pleased to be hosting that program for you. Uh, I really like it, but I want you to explain. I want you to explain to the viewers the topics, what it's about, and everything. Yeah, um, this program is talking about uh, some of the misconceptions many people have about Islam, uh, some of the so-called controversial issues about Islam. Okay. Uh, and we are quoting those misconceptions, and we are clarifying them or give the intellectual explanation for those misconceptions okay. in order to clean, uh, to clear them, whether they are doubts, misconceptions, controversial, uh, controversial issues, or whatever. Examples of this, 
we, uh, in fact, we chose the most so-called controversial issues about yes. Islam, the hottest topics, yes. you can say, um, such as the marriage of the Prophet so to so Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her when she was nine, yes. uh, the marriages of the Prophet so to so 13 uh, women. ladies, women, um, apostasy in Islam, yes. uh, hudud, yes. stoning the adulterers and adulteress, uh, the, Quran. The, the Quran, the preservation of the Quran, yes. uh, and uh, jihad in Islam, and so on. Okay. So uh, these are, we chose the most controversial topics. See, I think we uh, living in the West, uh, we need to be intellectual enough in order to face the challenges uh, that... Uh, uh, that any of us or Muslims are facing in the West. As you know that the Islamic phenomena in the West is fairly new. And now we see the second or the third generation of Muslims living in the West. Those people are different from the old generation who used to say yes sir, yes sir, yes sir to the white person. And they are trying to preserve their identity, ascertain their identity, and find a space for them in a European yeah, uh, context. Course, yes. Now, for those people, we need to empower them. We need to equip them. And uh, I don't know whether you... Uh, uh, yes, sure. you are aware that, uh, you know, uh, we have a website called Islam21c.com. Yes. yes. In that website, we are trying to articulate... Yes. The Orthodox Islam to Western audience, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. Okay. So uh, in that website, we receive some questions. Uh, and in my work as well as, um, uh, as the founder of MRDF, as well as a member of the Islamic Sharia Council, we receive so many questions from Muslims and non-Muslims related to uh, these topics. Uh, one time I received uh, a question from a sister, practicing sister. She is involved in da'wah. She is a doctor. She told me that her colleague told her that Islam allows uh, men to rape, rape concubines. Yes. Okay. And uh, she, was, she was panicking. Now, without answering her directly, we need to empower her to face those challenges because yes. imagine if she doesn't know how to answer it, yes. she at least she has to have a framework yes. to be able to yes. answer or to uh, respond, not right. necessarily answer, yes. respond to any allegation like this. Right. So, and uh, unfortunately, there is a material there, but the material there, unfortunately, is more of apologetic yes. material rather than a material that is trying to explain what is the orthodox uh, position. Right. And we have to be careful when dealing that? with these things. Dr. Hayton, you mentioned the word framework. And in this series, in the introduction, uh, you spoke at length about a framework uh, perhaps you can mention what do you explain? What do you mean by framework? And what were some of the points that you mentioned that that constitute the framework of responding to these people? Yeah. First of all, if you want to respond to any allegation against Islam, don't accept to be in a defensive position. Also, don't apologize for Islam. Don't accept to be inferior to the yes. person in front of you. Yes. Sometimes you need to attack a little bit by saying, what about this in yes. Christianity? What about that in Judaism? What about this in uh, liberalism and, yes. and so on? Yeah, okay, also, great. you need to know that there is a different uh, framework between the Islamic idea uh, the Islamic concept and the non-Islamic concept because the Islamic concept is a divine Islam yes. is a divine system, while, while anything other than Islam is not divine. So we need to also understand this. We need also, the, the person who is responding to this question should not raise his or her expectations that the person will accept Islam yes. immediately. Yes. They might refuse right. to uh, accept Islam. Also, we need to bear in mind that sometimes the translation is misleading. Right. Yeah? For example, uh, the word slavery. The word slavery had a negative connotation. Yes. So if yes. we accept that Islam accepts slavery, then the viewers, especially the Western viewers, will understand certain things, certain yes. contexts. Same thing with the word uh, segregation. Yes. Uh, part of the framework is to have a clear intention. Why are you responding to those allegations? Why are you debating or discussing things or clarifying things? And the last thing, the person has to rely on Allah Jalla wa'ala and ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for support. If the person does not ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for support, he will be let down and he will have no tawfiq.
Dr. Haitham, I think this, these issues are, especially the English-speaking Muslim community in the Western world, they are in dire need of a program like this. Yes. I think it's very important. But the problem is many people are scared to address these controversial issues. Mm -hmm. So instead they run away and talk about, you know, heart-softening topics. Yes. They're scared to address these issues. So we're very pleased and honored to be a part of this program. And I hope and I think it will be beneficial uh, for many people, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, considering that, uh, uh, why is that? Why do you think some people are scared to address these issues directly? Uh, for a number of things. First of all, some of them they think that Islam is irrational. And some of them they say, oh, we believe in Allah, we believe in Islam, and we accept it, but. Right. I say, see, the deen of Allah respects mind, respects intellect, yes. res respect uh, the, thinking, uh, yes. the aql. Yes. Aql, as we say in yes. Aql, yes. Okay. Respect it. In fact, encourage people to see and ponder and reflect. Yes. Uh, uh, Allah Jalla wa'ala always uh, 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 prays using the aql. Inna fi dhalika la ayatin liqawmi ya'qilun, liqawmi yatafakkaroon. People who reflect, people who ponder, and so on. So, uh, Islam is a very rational religion. Some people think that Islam is an irrational religion, and that's why they are afraid to meet or face the rational people who are the non-Muslims. Right, right, okay, yeah. that's why they shy away. Oh, wait, okay, the, the second important point is the inferiority complex. Maybe because especially the West is uh, superior now, right. we think that we are inferior. Yes. Okay. Yes, and doctor, I always say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, that they, the Western world, they, I, say, I say this, uh, let's define the term civilization. Just because the Western world perhaps is, a, is ahead in technological and scientific yeah, it achievements, mean, yes. it doesn't mean they're ahead morally and, and spiritually. Exactly. So I think we it, have to keep that. It doesn't mean that they are advanced, uh, more advanced in, in, in a civilized way. Yes, yes. Because we need a definition for civilization. civilization what, yes. is, what does it mean? Yes, exactly. It's, it should be a comprehensive term. Dr. Haitam, you made a program called Islamic State, which I benefited from tremendously as well. But why did you create that program? Do you think there was a need to, to address some uh, misconceptions or, or to clarify some issues regarding the Islamic State? Because there's no true Islamic State uh, these yes, days since this, the time of the Ottoman Caliphate. Yeah, this is, this is a good uh, point. Uh, first of all, we need to show our viewers, and I really appreciate what uh, Qanat al-Huda is doing, because it is trying to present Islam as a comprehensive way of life. Many people think whenever they see a person with a beard, or maybe with this type of clothes, that he has nothing to do with politics, all what he is talking about is heart softening matters, or maybe fiqh matters, or uh, women when they have menses, how, how do they pray, right, etc. Right. Uh, and they don't think that, first of all, Islam is a comprehensive way of life and Islam covers law of governance. Yeah. Okay? And okay. there is a full comprehensive political system in Islam. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, so that course. was the main reason mm -hmm. is to explain it to people. The second point was we would like to clarify to uh, our viewers who do not know much about Islam, that Islam is not a dictatorship uh, system. Uh, there are many people who claim that they are many, many states now, that they claim that they are Islamic states or they rule by Sharia, etc. They have so many shortcom shortcomings and they cannot uh, claim that they are presenting the ideal picture of the Islamic State. So we need to know th about that. Okay, D Dr. Haitham, I certainly appreciate those comments. We only have about a minute left. I did want to mention Living Islam in the West with Jamil, Brother Jamil. I like that program also. Yeah. But we're out of time. Perhaps you can talk about, uh, give in this last minute, give the viewers kind of a sneak peek, a preview of any kind of future projects that you have in the works now. Do you have something in mind for a future program on your next trip here to our studios? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, I would like really to carry on on this project, Living Islam in the West, and okay. maybe we'll have the third part of it, inshallah. Okay. 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 Uh, I will have a, another program about uh, being uh, productive. We have a program about being proactive, but we would like to have a program about being productive, inshallah. Okay. Maybe another program about setting a vision. We had a small program here in Huda yes. about setting a vision, but we would like to Expand elaborate inshallah. on this, inshallah. Dr. Haitham, I certainly appreciate it. And if viewers can, can contact you at the MRDF as well as uh, 3 wslam21c Islam21c.com. Uh, That's right. Thank inshallah. you, Dr. Haitham, for your time. I appreciate it. And you guys at home, I certainly hope you appreciate it and benefit from this uh, uh, episode of yours, Paul. So until next time, we leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come join us and have your say, let's talk about our way.
Remember you are not alone Huda is the light in your home We'll talk about Huda We'll talk about our way Come join us and have your say Let's talk about our way Remember you are not alone Huda is the light in your home